right, you see, because I always go back to being plain old me. Thank you. Our first reading is How to Pick and Eat Poems by Phyllis Coldy. Stop whatever it is you're doing. Come down from the attic. Grab a bucket or basket and head for light. That's where the best poems grow and in the dappled dark. Go slow. Watch out for thorns and bears. When you find a good bush, bow to it, or take off your shoes, pluck this poem, that poem, any poem. It should slip off the stem easy, just a little tickle. No need to sniff first, judge the color, test the firmness. You can only know it's ripe if you taste. So put a poem upon your lips. Chew its pulp. Let its juice spill over your tongue. Let your reading of it teach you what sort of creature you are and the nature of the ground you walk upon. Bring your whole life out loud to this one poem. Eating one poem can save you if you're hungry enough. Take companions poem picking when you can. Visit the wild and lovely and forgotten places, broken and hidden and walled up spaces. Reach into brambles, stain your skin, mash words against your teeth for love. And always leave some poems within easy reach for the next picker in kinship with the unknown. If ever you carry away more poems than you need, go on home to your kitchen and make good jam. Don't be in a rush. They're sure to keep. Some will even taste better with age. A rich batch of preserves. Store up jars and jars of jam. Plenty for friends. Plenty for the long, howling winter. Plenty for strangers. Plenty for all the bread in this broken world. And now please join in our second hymn, number 95, There Is More Love Somewhere. Oh, 
Our second reading is Sometimes I Am Startled Out of Myself by Barbara Cooker. Sometimes I am startled out of myself, like this morning when the wild geese came squawking, flapping their rusty hinges, and something about their trek across the sky made me think about life, the places of brokenness, the places of sorrow, the places where grief has strung me out to dry. And then the geese came calling, the leader falling back when tired, another taking her place. Hope is born on wings. Look at the trees. They turn gold for a brief while, then lose it all each November. Through the cold months, they stand, take the worst weather has to offer, and still they put out shy green leaves come April, come May. The geese glide over the cornfields lay on the pond with its sedges and reeds. You do not have to be wise. Even a goose knows how to find shelter. Where the corn still lies in the stubble and dried stalks, all we do is pass through here the best way we can. They stitch up the sky, and it is whole again. Thank you, Kate. So what color are you folks today? Do you think we have a rainbow out there? Let's hope so. Our first UU principle affirms and promotes the worth and dignity of everyone. Everyone includes ourselves. Author Gloria Jean Watkins says, healing is an act of communion. Rarely, if ever, are we healed in isolation. To me, that says, when ourselves are healthy, we are stronger in community, and our collective energy gives us the power to heal one another. We've all been through a rough year and a half. Today's service is an invitation, an opportunity to turn inward and reflect on how we are, how our relationship to ourselves is. As Kermit asks, have we heard voices calling our names? Have we been half asleep? Is there something we need to see or pay attention to? Today, let us sit gently with ourselves to listen, to rest, and restore together. My greatest fear is that I'm not good enough. I had a gut-wrenching response when I saw this message come across my Facebook feed. I'm not so much surprised by my response, but wondered how one can respond when wrestling with the same fear myself. A heart, thumbs up, a hug, a sad face, ignore, just doesn't seem like enough. There's that word again, enough. How about you are good and you are enough for a comment? Even that seems weak, but the best I can do and good enough. Note to myself, remember that words alone can be encouraging and uplifting to a wounded spirit. Words do matter, they really do. They can build up or tear down. Do you ever wonder how one arrives at the place of not enough? And how does one move towards the belief, I am enough? On my life's journey, I've wrestled with worthiness a long time. 
I don't think it helped when I was taught that I was born with original sin and it showed up as a black mark on my soul. But not to worry, I have your fly, Judy. <laughs> but not to worry, because baptism made my soul white and pure and perfect again. Performing good deeds led to a higher place in heaven. Performing bad deeds could land me burning in hell for eternity, depending on the severity of the deed. But there was this place called purgatory. It was sort of a get out of jail after you do your time kind of place. As I recall it, it wasn't supposed to be as hot there either. It was more of a waiting area. In my childlike mind, I pictured a staircase beginning below the earth, the hell purgatory area, leading up to God, sitting on puffy white clouds at the top of the staircase. <laughs> performing good deeds advanced my soul toward heaven, and performing not so good deeds, I was demoted towards purgatory, with the risk of sliding permanently into the fires of hell. As I grew older, I used a modified analogy. I dropped the stern-looking guards at the entrance gates, kept the staircase image, and gave myself permission to negotiate the stairs worry-free. Even though I hoped I would land closer to the top stair, I thought I would probably end up in the middle of the staircase for eternity after doing my time in purgatory, because I thought I probably wasn't all that bad. But it sure would be nice to be on that upper third of the staircase. Did you catch that subtle switch in word meaning from performing good or bad deeds to being good enough to end up in the middle of the staircase? It just snuck in there, didn't it? That word enough pops up as did the temptation of striving for the upper level. Well, I think I've had enough. I'm really tired. I'm really tired of this outdated model. It has to go. It has left me ragged and worn from running up and down stairs for years, trying to be good enough. I'm hopeful for a way out of this Sisyphus-like drama of working for worthiness. But I know I must remember to go slowly. It's a secret so rarely mentioned that healing takes time and rarely happens in isolation. In her book, The Gifts of Imperfection, Brene Brown writes that our sense of worthiness is a critically important piece that gives us access to love and belonging, and it lives inside our own story. She goes on to say that the greatest challenge for most of us is believing that we are worthy now, right this minute. There are no prerequisites. So many of us have knowingly created, unknowingly allowed, been handed down a long list of worthiness prerequisites. For example, I'll be worthy when I lose 20 pounds, if I can get pregnant. I'll be worthy if I stay sober, if I'm a good parent. When I make a living at, fill in the blank, if I can hold my marriage together, when I make partner, when my parents finally approve, if he calls back and asks me out, when I can do it all and look like I'm not even trying. Brown goes on to say that what is truly at the heart of wholeheartedness is worthy now, not if, not when, right now, right this minute, as is. She offers helps on the journey to our authentic self, that letting go of who we think we're supposed to be and embracing who we are. 
We learn to see our imperfections as gifts, as well as engaging in the world from a place of worthiness. From what will people think to what I am enough. On this journey, Brown stresses the importance of self-compassion and self-care. She goes on to say that it takes courage, compassion, and connection. And it takes time. We need to be brave. We need to be patient and gentle with ourselves. And we need to help each other find our way to wholeness. So that's what the experts are saying. When despair grows in me, and I wake in the night at the least sound in fear of what my life may be, sometimes I go to my refrigerator. Oh, I have other ways of nurturing myself. For instance, yoga, tai chi, simple walking, reading poetry to mention a few. Sometimes I just need a quick fix though, and that's where refrigerator Fran comes in handy. I love Fran and how she nourishes my body and spirit. Did I mention that she came from Amana? Fran is the best, tall, sturdy, with two doors and a drawer. Her handles are perfect, long and sleek. Fran is faithful, holding food at just the right temperature. I especially like how moist she keeps a slice of carrot cake. My favorite to keep on hand for those times I need a little taste of joy. Fran doesn't place a lot of expectations on me. She doesn't complain about the microwave meals that I keep on hand for those days of struggle that pop up when I least expect them. Nor does she scold me if I don't keep her drawer neat and tidy. Sometimes when I'm indecisive about what to eat and negative thoughts close in, I hold on to her sleek handles and rest my head gently against them. Why is this decision so hard. I'm a grown woman, and I should be able to figure this out. Tears flow sometimes, but Fran remains calm. No shaming here, just a soft, gentle humming, helping to clear the way to newer, healthier thoughts. It's okay. Breathe. You can figure this out. Keep it simple, try again. Lifting my head, I open the door and a light shines on a loaf of bread and a jar of nut butter. Add a glass of milk, I got this. Did I mention that Fran is most likely the smartest refrigerator on the planet? She serves up quite a menu. She's a great listener and cheerleader is pretty much always present, except for a short duration getaway. But she did leave her helpful words, thankfully. She's open-minded, offers uplifting inspiration, and especially the kind words that really stick with her. For example, just the other day when I was passing by and feeling anxiety mounting up, as it is known to do, Words from Eleanor Roosevelt caught my eye and thankfully reminded me that yesterday is history and tomorrow is a mystery. But today, today is a gift. Message to myself, be here, present, now, in this moment. I don't need to worry. Be gone, worries. What can one do when feelings of sheer exasperation with the human condition rise up and you want to rant and rave at the top of your lungs? Well, guess who's hanging around Fran just for these occasions? Good old Albert Einstein and his feisty words that can bring instant relief. 
I find it difficult to believe that I belong to such an idiotic, rotten species, the species that actually boasts of its freedom of will, heroism on command, senseless violence, and all the loathsome nonsense that goes by the name of patriotism. What do you think Fran does after such an explosion of feelings? I think she would smile if her refrigerator could and cheer me on. You go, girl. Release that anger. Let it go. But she just goes on humming in her gentle way. No judgment here. Permission to gripe. Granted. There has been a lot of heavy feelings going on during this pandemic time. Sometimes it's hard to carry the weight of the sorrow, to find a way through it. Fran carries an important reminder for such times on one of her sturdy white doors, a message of hope and new insight from Helen Keller stands out. Although the world is full of suffering, it is also full of the overcoming of suffering. Perhaps permission to lean into grief as long as it takes, granted, no need to rush. Fran offers an array of sweet memories which helps to soothe a weary pandemic soul. She holds images of places visited, Italy, Ireland, France, and even Chicago memories of Broadway shows. The music of Jersey Boys, Wicked, and Billy Elliot. These memories are healing. Why, there are times I might find myself humming a tune or tap dancing along with Billy Elliot. Refrigerator Fran has a delightful whimsical side, too. She almost houses a small zoo, which includes six colorful chickens, one crossing a road, and dreaming of a world where chickens can cross the road without having their motives questioned. There are two roosters. One is especially colorful and traveled all the way from Pienza, Italy. It's hard to miss the beautiful turquoise and lavender mother and baby dolphins swimming side by side and joyfully leaping out of the water. They both have blue glass eyes that sparkle when the sun shines through the kitchen window. And then there are the colorful clothespin cats, who I might add get along quite nicely with the chickens. These are not ordinary cats. They hold important messages, words of encouragement, and words that might heal a frail psyche. Like what Christopher Robin said to Pooh, promise me you'll always remember you're braver than you believe and stronger than you seem and smarter than you think. Permission to feel confident, proud, with self-acceptance granted. William Dunkerley, an English poet and frequent visitor of France, shares words of quietness for occasions when fear and confusion are lurking in the mind. Picture yourself wrapped in a warm, soft cloak. It could even be an invisibility cloak, if needed. And listen to his prayer for quietness. Amid all the traffic of the ways, turmoils without, within. Make in my heart a quiet place and come and dwell therein. A little shrine of quietness, all sacred to thyself, where thou shalt all my soul possess and I may find myself. A little place of mystic grace, of self and sin swept bare, where I may look into thy face and talk with thee in prayer. Seriously, these words can draw me into a cone of healing silence with magnetic force, at least for a while. Sometimes the flame of compassion grows dim and fatigue settles in. When energy levels are depleted and there's nothing left to give others, let alone oneself, when the tyranny of the urgent creeps in, old learning chattering voices can plague a mind, like just push through it, 
Keep moving. You can do this. You're needed. You're just being selfish. When the line between compassion and guilt begins to blur, Refrigerator Fran calls on gentle, encouraging words by Kelly Ray Roberts. Soul care, silence the noise, tend to your heart, listen to your whispers, unburden your spirit, rest and restore, permission granted. So I'm going to let you in on a little secret, which some of you probably figured out by now. I placed all these words on Fran. Some were given or sent with love by my spouse or friends. Refrigerator Fran holds words of inspiration, encouragement, and healing, not to mention the most delicious carrot cake. Who knew? A refrigerator could hold such power. I want to give the last word to one more expert. So these words of wisdom are from the Unitarian Universalist Hysterical Society. You are good enough. You are good enough. Actually, you're probably overqualified. <laughs> but let's start the day off humble. So may it be. <laughs> it looks like Kate is up with the offering. <laughs> You turned all the pages, oh, goodness. Okay, <laughs> there are three ways to give and they will be shown on your screen. So you can send a check to the uh, address of People's Church on screen. You can go to the website peoplesuu.org and look for the Donate Now tab. Or you can use the Vanco mobile app on your smartphone. Now I invite you to listen to Angie play the interlude. Unfolds, challenge what the future holds. Try and keep your head up to the sky. Lovers, they may cause you tears. Go ahead, release your fears. Stand up and be counted. Don't be ashamed to cry. You gotta be, you gotta be bad, you gotta be bold, you gotta be wiser. You gotta be hard, you gotta be tough, you gotta be stronger. You gotta be cool, you gotta be calm You gotta stay together All I know, all I know, love will save the day Herald what your mother said Read the books your father read Try and solve the puzzles in your own sweet time Some may have more cash than you Take a different view My, oh my You gotta be, you gotta be bad You gotta be bold, you gotta be wiser You gotta be hard, you gotta be tough You gotta be stronger You gotta be cool, you gotta be calm You gotta stay together All I know, all I know Love will save the day all I know, all I know, love will save the day. As we move into a time of prayer and meditation, Kate and I will light three candles for our community, one to represent each of us, one to represent all of us, and one for any intentions, joys, and sorrows you carry in your hearts today.
Thank you, Judy. It's time for our prayer and meditation. If we can just close our eyes, take a few breaths. Let us give thanks by Max Hoots. Let us give thanks for the bounty of people, for children who are our second planting, and though they grow like weeds and the wind too soon blows them away, may they forgive us our cultivation and fondly remember where their roots are. Let us give thanks for generous friends with hearts as big as Hubbard's and smiles as bright as their blossoms. Let us give thanks for feisty friends as tart as apples, for continuous friends who, like scallions and cucumbers, keep reminding us we had them, for crotchety friends as sour as rhubarb and as indestructible, for handsome friends who are as gorgeous as eggplants and as elegant as a roll of corn, and the others as plain as potatoes, and so good for you. For funny friends who are as silly as Brussels sprouts and as amusing as Jerusalem artichokes, and serious friends as complex, complex as cauliflower and as intricate as onions. For friends as unpretentious as cabbage, as subtle as summer squash, as persistent as parsley, as delightful as dill, as endless as zucchini, and who, like parsnips, can be counted on to see you through the long winter. For old friends, nodding like sunflowers in the evening time, and young friends coming on as fast as radishes. For loving friends, who wind around us like tendrils, and hold us despite our blights, wilts, and witherings. And finally, for those friends now gone, like gardens past, that have, been in, that have been harvested, but who fed us in their times that we might have life thereafter. For all these, we give thanks. Amen. Now we'll go ahead and extinguish the chalice. Please join us, the words are on your screen. We extinguish this chalice flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Now Angie will join us with, in the postlude. You can turn a phrase into a weapon or a drug You can be an outcast or be the backlash of somebody's lack of love Or you can start speaking up Nothing's gonna hurt you the way that words do when they settle neath your skin Kept on the inside and no sunlight Sometimes the shadow wins I wonder what would happen if you say what you want to say Let the words fall out Honestly, I want to see you be brave with what you want to say Let the words 
fall out Honestly, I want to see you be brave Yeah Everybody's been there, everybody's been stared down by the enemy Fallen for the fear and done some disappearing And bow down to the mighty Don't run Stop holding your tongue Maybe there's a way out of this cage where you live Maybe one of these days you can let the light in Show me how big your brave is Say what you want say let the words fall out honestly i want to see you be brave with what you want to say let the words fall out honestly i want to see you be brave It's time for our blessing, our benediction. If you feel comfortable, please hold your hands up and let's send our good energy out to, to our congregation and out to the world. Let us be at peace with our bodies and our minds. Let us return to ourselves and become holy ourselves. Let us be aware of the source of being common to us all and to all living things. Evoking the presence of the great compassion, let us all fill our hearts with our own compassion towards ourselves and towards all living beings. Let us pray that we ourselves cease to be the cause of suffering to each other. With humility, with awareness of the existence of life and of the sufferings that are going on around us, let us practice the establishment of peace in our hearts and on earth. Amen. Thich Nhat Hanh. Everybody here. <laughs>